Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Almost Normal. I just did the thing that I feel like a lot of people are afraid to do and I am included in that. I have been putting this thing off for such a long time because I've just been nervous about it and I just didn't want to do it and I didn't want to face it. But right before filming this, I decided to push myself and throw away, try on all and throw away those that didn't fit me, all my jeans and pants. And I got through about three quarters of everything I have. Like my closet is literally insane. Like everything needs to go basically. But I spent like an hour trying on all the jeans that I had. And let me tell you about 80% of them did not fit me at all. And like, it wasn't even like they slightly didn't fit. It was like, I could not even get the buttons to touch each other. They were so small. And I have been holding on to these jeans for years. I think like some of the pairs have literally come from when I lived in London. There were some pairs that I recognized from when I was like 15, which is crazy. Like, why do I still have those jeans? Like these tiny, tiny pair of jeans that literally looked like a baby would fit into them. I, I still had them in my closet for some reason and they were just taking up space. Um, I was looking at them every day whenever I tried to figure out what to wear. And I just felt like that was not really the uh, energy I wanted anymore when I got up and started my day, you know? I'm just like looking at all these clothes that no longer service me, but were just taking up all the space inside my home. Sorry, a plane is flying. But yeah, it did not feel right that these useless pieces of clothing were taking up so much space in my cupboard. And I go through these like moments where I don't shop at all. And then I go through other moments where I literally don't do anything but like scroll through clothing websites and go thrifting. And I'm in that, I'm in that space at the moment where I'm just like obsessively going through like the sales on each website of every brand that I buy from. And I'm just like obsessively going over and over and over, over and over each site over and over again, because I feel like I'm like missing something. I'm like missing something that I would want. And I'm just in a bit of like an obsessive shopper spiral at the moment, which I would like to get out of. But I noticed that I had literally no space in my closet whatsoever. And I was just like, I don't really quite understand like where I'm expecting to put all these clothes. All of my drawers, like I find it really hard to open and close them. They're just packed with stuff. And I've cleared out my closet before, but the one thing that I avoided was jeans and like pants and stuff like that. I don't know why. I think probably like 50 pairs of jeans in my cupboards and I don't think I've worn any for years. Like I think I wear one pair. I wear this one pair I got from Maritzia all the time and I don't think I ever venture out to wear any of the other pairs that I have. So anyway, I spent this morning finally going through everything, trying everything on, seeing if anything fits. Basically nothing fit anymore. And it took a moment to be okay with that. But then I was like, you know what? These are all from like a different lifestyle, a lifestyle. All of these pairs of jeans are from like a different life of mine. Like I am not the same person I was when I bought these jeans. And I think a lot of them also were purchases from when I wasn't accepting that I was no longer that person. And so I was still buying things that just didn't fit me. So I would literally like buy things from the shop and I would take them home and they wouldn't fit me. And so I feel like I had a lot of pairs of jeans from me doing that, from going into a store, looking at the sizes, not trying anything on, taking it home and then they don't fit. And then I just like throw them to the back of the cupboard. So it was like I had about like 40 pairs of jeans in there that will not go on my body. It's insane. So I put them all together and I'm going to bring them to a donation store because I simply don't need them in my life anymore. They remind me all the time that I don't fit in them anymore and that doesn't matter and I don't have to, but it's like I don't have to be reminded of that all the time. I'm just sort of torturing myself because look, when I look at clothes that don't fit me anymore, I think back on the times when they did and I start to like miss that time and I start to miss how I looked and I start to question how different I am and all of that and it's just like, useless noise in my head um, that I get every time I walk into my closet. So I had enough of it and I went through everything. I still actually, I didn't go through everything. I went through like three quarters of everything. So I still have a bit of stuff to do, but I think for now that was a really good start because that is something I have been avoiding doing for such a long time. Like every time I look in the closet, I'm like, stare. I like stare at these piles of jeans 
and I like the last thing I want to do is go through them but I did this morning so anyway gonna be giving a lot of jeans away this week because uh, I they just have to get out and also I have to make sure that I remove them from my home um basically I did like a spring a spring cleaning kind of thing of my closet not that long ago for like tops and some dresses and just everything else but but the jeans because the jeans was just like something I wasn't able to uh, face but until today and I put them all I put all the clothes in like plastic boxes and then I just like put them downstairs in my basement and they they remain there to this day just sitting there collecting dust in boxes taking up like the same amount of space that they were taking up but just in a different part of my house now I it like pains me to know that they're still in the house because I feel like I didn't achieve the thing that I was trying to achieve I feel like I just half did it and I just like took them out of my room but they still remain in my house they still remain as my property and I just really want to like release everything so my goal for the next couple of weeks is to bring things to stores bring things to donation centers and just like actually get rid of them and actually just like release them and let them like have a different life and not just like sit in my house like all alone I think I get like really really attached to objects weirdly attached to objects I think everything is connected I feel anxiety to like let certain things go. I feel like maybe I'm a slight hoarder, but I have to fix it because I really like shopping, you know? It's like something I enjoy doing and it kind of makes me want to be sick a bit when I shop and then I look at my closet and see like how much shit is in my closet. So I don't know, I'm just trying to, uh, I'm trying to push myself to do things that scare me a little bit recently and that is one thing that really was scaring me was trying to get rid of a lot of clothes and I did it that one time but only they only went as far as my basement they still are downstairs and my jeans now but my jeans they are not going in a basement at all they are going straight from the closet to the car to somewhere else because I don't want them and if I keep them in my house for long enough I'll never get rid of them like it was really hard to get this far where I was trying on all the pairs and like seeing if they fit or they didn't fit or whatever or if I just didn't like them and it was like really hard to like discard them to the side of the room but like let's just keep that momentum up and just like go the full way and actually just like bring them outside of my home so that's the next step and I'm gonna like make sure I do it because I regularly think about those boxes of clothes that sit in my basement and they they're like haunting me you know they're like sending up messages upstairs to me telling me to deal with my life and I just am trying to ignore it so it's genuinely like a voice in the back of my head saying like you didn't quite complete this thing that you really need to do and like the clothes are still in your brain space just as much as they were when they were in the closet so time to get rid of them time to go so anyway that's what I'm trying to do <clears throat> I had this one pair of jeans that I think that my dad bought them for me when I was probably 14 15 and I know that I've pulled those out before and been like why on earth do I have them they literally probably would fit like over my foot and that's it and I was faced with them again today and I found it really hard to get rid of them because I guess they have some sort of like sentimental value to them but at the same time it's like they're a pair of reformation skinny jeans that even if they did fit me I probably wouldn't wear they're just like not really my style anymore and I found it really hard to let those go. I think I just get like overly connected to inanimate objects. I was at school the other day and I got a coffee from the cafe. A coffee? A coffee from, yep, uh, in, a, in a coffee cup, whatever. I just got a coffee from the cafe. It was in my possession for about three hours or whatever. When class was over, I was like, I don't want to bring this coffee cup home with me anymore because I feel like I don't have any space in my car and all the cup holders taken and everything. Like I, I just, Let's just get rid of this disposable cup that I got from the cafe. Like, I like put it in the trash. And as I started to drive away from it, I could see like the top of the lid still poking out of the trash. And as I was driving my car away and I was looking at the cup in the trash, I genuinely started to get emotional about it and I was like oh my god I feel so bad I just left it there all by itself like that was a particularly crazy moment in my life where I was like finding it hard to part from this cup from this cardboard cup 
that I had been in possession of for like three hours. That was so weird. Like I, I literally, as I was driving away, I was considering going into the trash and just like taking it home with me because I, that is how emotional I was feeling about the cup. And then I had to give myself a real talking to on the way home and I was like, Rita, that's insane. The cup isn't even really yours. Like, let it go. It's not sad. It doesn't have feelings. It's not upset with you that you put it in the trash. Like genuinely like looking at myself in the mirror in the car and being like, don't worry. He's not upset. He has no feelings. He didn't do anything wrong. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so I, I definitely have a problem with like letting go of things for sure. And like clothing is just one of those things that I really find hard to part with. One, because I think maybe one day I'll wear it again. I have so many pieces of clothing that I keep literally because I'm like, maybe one day this will come into style. Like that doesn't matter. If it comes into style again, just like buy a different version later when that happens. Like you don't have to like keep it at home. Like waiting like doomsday prepping for the day where i don't know for a day when like those black skinny jeans with the studs down the side like come back into fashion like if they come back into fashion you are completely capable of going out and finding them again a different kind of pair a new pair a better pair um so i don't get rid of things because of that i think i'm gonna regret it i'm gonna walk into an era of my life where something i had is like the biggest stylish trendy thing in the world at the moment and I I'm not I'm not, I'm gonna be like why did I throw that away I had that exact thing I was like ahead of the curve and now I'm behind it that's one reason two sentimental value I get very very possessive over things as you heard with the cup I found that really hard to let go of so as you can imagine a pair of jeans that I have memories of buying and like I have memories of being that person who fit in the jeans like as you can imagine I probably find that quite hard to let go of as well so that's Reason number two. Also reason number three is I guess I feel like I find it difficult to accept that I am different and keeping the jeans keep it or keeping the clothes that don't fit me anymore is basically me saying like they don't fit me now but maybe they will um, and it's sort of me putting pressure on myself to sort of be able to fit into those clothes at some point again and it's like I don't really need to fit into the clothes. I'm not the same person. I don't even really like the clothes. Like, even if they fit me, I don't even think I would have worn them. Like, we have to let it go. And I think there's like, every time I walked into my closet, I would see these piles and piles of jeans and I would just be like, oh, one day maybe I'll fit into those when I like do this exercise or I start going on this diet. Like maybe I'll be able to wear them again. So I shouldn't throw them away. And you know, it's just like this like pressure I'm putting on myself by just having them around. So we're getting rid of it. We're getting rid of that energy. I hate it. I don't like waking up in the morning and thinking I'm like not good or like I need to like improve on myself. Like that's like, yes, okay. You can wake up and say, I'm gonna do this really good today. But like to wake up and be reminded that you are not someone who you used to be and just be like, ups and like being upset about it and not being happy about it. Like that's a problem. I don't wanna wake up like that anymore. So goodbye jeans. You don't fit me, you don't serve me, but you'll serve someone else probably. There's like some really nice pieces in there. Some like Wrangler, Levi's, like a whole bunch of stuff. So if you're in the LA area, like look out, cause there might be like an influx of jeans coming into the donation stores near you. Just a little tip. Anyway, that's what I did this morning. Goodbye jeans. You don't make me feel good. Um, we're not a good match anymore. Like you should go off and like find your new match. You know, I'm holding you back. I'm really, I'm holding you back by keeping you here. You know, if you love something, you should let it go. The other day I was like flipping through my old photos, which I never do by the way. Uh, photos, again, actually, can I just say photos are another thing that I find it really hard to let go of, like deleting things from my phone or my laptop. I find it really hard to let go of, even if it's a shitty picture of the Los Angeles skyline that I took in 2012, or if it's a picture of a menu that I took to send to someone because I was gonna order them food. Like, I find it so hard to delete those things and to let go of those things. And I actually get genuine anxiety when I delete things because I'm like, oh my God, wait, was that something I needed? And I just like have like this weird freak out every time I delete something, even if it's like on my phone, which is really, really crazy. But anyway, I was like looking through my photos the other day and I think I might be a hoarder. 
now that I've like talked it out with you guys a little bit like I don't know can someone let me know what the symptoms of a hoarder are because like I'm a bit concerned because I like almost cried when I tried to get rid of that cup the other day so like that's that was what was making me a bit nervous you know like I know clothes like a lot of people keep their clothes they find out how to let go of clothes and like things that they have but like cardboard cup that I got from a takeout cafe is like not the same so I can literally like in my head see the image of me driving off leaving it behind <laughs> yeah I was looking through my old photos and I saw some photographs that I took of myself from about two years ago now I think and it was when I got the worst acne of my life now I grew up with acne I have had acne I remember getting my first spot when I was like 11 years old and being like, what the fuck is this? Like going into primary school and being like the only one that had any blemishes on their face. But I had acne for such a long time. I had acne from like 11 throughout my whole teen years and it would go up and down in severity, but it would never be like cystic acne. It would be like really, really bumpy, like bumpy skin, bumpy and red skin and really, really oily skin. But it was never like cystic deep acne it was more uneven surfaces like my forehead was completely like just covered in bumps there was no smooth parts of my face and as a teenager I was extremely self-conscious about it like extremely so I would do horrible things which like I I, I couldn't even look at myself in the mirror and that's how self-conscious I was about it so there were there were times where I would just like go to sleep with makeup on so I didn't have to look at myself in the mirror with no makeup on and then the next day just like put more makeup on which is just like insane and it's like Okay, that probably like contributed a bit to how bad my skin was, but my skin was not good. My parents took me to a lot of doctors, a lot of like homeopathic doctors and like Chinese medicine doctors and stuff to try and fix it because they didn't really believe in medication, but they believed in like herbs and healthy lifestyle and stuff like that. And I think some of those things did help me, but I think a lot of it was just like hormones. I was just growing and changing and my skin was keeping up with me. Um, I was also like a really, and I'm still like a really, hot person like I run very warm um, and so my face was always kind of flushed and pink which also didn't help and I also think that made my acne worse because I was like sweating all the time and I was sweating my makeup and it you know I just it just wasn't good I didn't have the best skin growing up but I was always told that if I had bad skin when I was a teen I probably would have great skin when I'm an adult I probably would not have acne again as an adult. That's kind of what I was told. I'm sure maybe a part of that was just people trying to make me feel better about myself because I really don't think that I was handling it very well. I really, really, really hated the way I looked and I think that if you haven't had acne it's hard to understand but when you have something on your face that you're feeling self-conscious about it changes your whole persona because you're kind of always like not wanting to look at people in the eye you're not really listening. The whole time people are talking to you, you're just like, oh, are they looking at this big spot on my nose? Or like, are they judging how horrible my skin looks right now? Or is my makeup slightly melting off? It's really hot out here. Like, do, do I look horrible? And like, you're constantly having those thoughts all the time. So it's kind of hard to concentrate on what anyone is saying. And that is what I experienced a lot. I was always losing track of conversations. I wasn't responding to people properly. And I was always looking down at the floor or the table because I really hated looking at people in the face because I thought that they were just like judging my skin, which of course they weren't. I mean, maybe some people might have been, but like I was a teenage girl with acne, like it happens. <laughs> All of my friends pretty much had acne in some form. Mine maybe was just like a little bit worse than everyone else's, but like we all had it. It's completely natural, everyone gets it, you know? I think as a teen as well, you're just sort of like extra self-conscious about everything. So that probably didn't help. And you know, you're talking to boys for the first time. I had braces for a while. So I was just like not feeling myself, let's just say, not feeling myself at all. But I can also say that when I would talk to people who also had acne, the last thing I was thinking was, oh my God, look how bad their skin looks. You know, like that was the last thing I was thinking. So why I thought everyone was thinking that about me, I don't know, because when I was talking to someone with acne, I noticed it, but I it, I wasn't like, oh God, poor her, she has terrible skin. Like never, ever. And I know that I spoke to people with worse skin than me and I never had those thoughts. So I don't know really why I thought everyone was like judging me who looked at me, but 
Anyway, when I got to like 18, 18-ish, 18 18-ish, 18 I had little like pimples here and there, but nothing too major. It really did calm down when I turned 18-ish. I was starting to like have actual smooth areas of skin, which I'd never had before. I didn't feel like I needed to wear like a coat of makeup on top of me all the time. I had pimples like around my face, but it was nothing compared to what I was growing up with. And they seem to sort of come and go quite quickly. Um, but yeah, so I basically at 18 had pretty good skin. It was like suddenly something I didn't have to worry about, which was really, really strange for me. I literally have had to, since then, had to worry about my face more. Well, at least I thought I did have to worry about it, but it was the first time in my life that I can remember where I could just leave the house without so much foundation on and I could just wake up and look in the mirror and like be like oh I look kind of nice today like literally the first time that has ever happened and I was like oh god I'm over it I'm over the hormonal acne like we're done I did it I, I survived like I don't have to worry about it ever again like thank god like everyone was telling me that if I had acne when I was a teenager like I'm probably not gonna get it again as an adult and now I'm 18 years old I'm an adult like it makes sense it's all gone and I'm feeling great. My hair is not as greasy as it used to be. My skin is not as greasy. Like I feel good. I feel healthy. So I had that for like a few years and it was wonderful. Again, like a few little pimples here and there, but like nothing major, nothing that I was like gonna not leave the house for like I had done before. I think it was, how old would I have been? So I started college when I was 24. So at 24 years old, the summer before I started college, I noticed that I was getting like, not not loads, but a few really super, super deep pimples like around my cheeks. And I had never ever had these before. I never had like what you would call maybe cystic acne ever. I always just had very surface level pimples that just like covered my face. But I don't think I ever had one that you could just feel like inside of your face. Um, and I started noticing I was getting like a few on my cheeks and I was like, Mm, okay, like this is new. I don't really know how to deal with it. When I was a kid, I would just like pop my pimples. Um, and so I thought, okay, I'm just gonna like pop these. And that was a huge mistake. Like they are not to be popped, those types of pimples. They are to be left or like to be seen by a doctor. Um, but I had never experienced them before, but I thought I was like all clued up on acne because I feel like I had had it for ages. Like I didn't think anything was there to like surprise me. And I was in London at the time. So I thought maybe traveling affected my skin a bit. I'm not sure. Uh, I had a little bit of like changes happening in my family. So maybe there was a bit of stress. And then of course I was starting college in September. So maybe I was just like nervous about that. And I was just like breaking out. I typically like, when I get stressed, my skin usually reacts. Some people sometimes have headaches. People sometimes have stomach aches. People sometimes have problems with like digestion and stuff like that when they get nervous. And for me, like I get rashes and acne and like weird things and hives. I used to get hives all the time. I used to just like break out in hives all over my body. I don't really get that anymore, thank God, because that's like really unpleasant. But every time I react to something, it's like my skin reacts to it with me. So I was like, you know what? It's probably like a combination of a lot of things happening, which is making me have these like unusual breakouts on my face. So I'm not gonna worry about it too much. As like a month goes by, none of them go away and only new ones appear. And it started to become extremely noticeable when people like took photos of me or something because it was quite on the side of my face. I didn't really see it much when I looked at my, myself in the mirror, but when people took pictures of me on the side, I was like, oh my God, like I did not realize my skin looked like that. And some of them were so big that they actually just like changed the shape of my face. Like if I turned a certain way, I would have like a different, like I wouldn't have like a smooth face line. It would be like bumpy, I don't know. And I was like, oh, like this seems different. This seems uh, maybe like, Something is changing, I don't know. Like, this is no longer like a couple of random pimples. This is like, seems to be bigger than that. And again, I'd never experienced cystic acne. I didn't know how to deal with it. I was not aware that it was like a medical thing that you should go see a doctor about. So I did all the things that I would do when I had the other kind of acne where I would just buy loads of creams and face masks. And uh, one time I went and it was a mistake, but I went to a facialist and I got an extraction facial done, which is when they like pop everything out of your face. And my skin, when I left that doctor's office, it wasn't a doctor's office, when I left that spa office, my face was 
purple, like purple. They literally gave me a free infrared session to like make the purple go down because the one facialist gave it to me, the facial. And then when I walked out, the other woman that worked at the store was like, oh my God, like, like she was concerned about what my face looked like. And it hurt when she did it, it hurt like nothing else. Like it felt like someone was stabbing me in the face with a knife is the only way I could probably describe it. It was hell, literal hell. And thinking back on that now, I think she should have known not to do that to cystic acne. Um, you are not meant to pick at it, you were not meant to pop them, you were meant to just leave them alone because if you pop them and squeeze them and touch them then they become acne scar, it becomes acne scarring like so when everything heals like you'll be left with like slightly like scarring on your face. So I left that place and of course it didn't help the acne anymore, it made my face look so red and I was still like breaking out, now I was breaking out on my neck and under my chin and on my back and it felt like it was like spreading across my whole body and I was getting really really nervous about it because I was also starting college in September and I was like oh god like I'm gonna have to I, I like I don't want to be not experiencing college as much as I can because like now I'm self-conscious about the way I look so now I'm gonna like not want to talk to new people I'm not gonna want to talk to professors I'm not gonna want to like stand up in class and like answer a question like I don't want to go into school feeling like that and so I was getting so nervous because I was like I know that when I feel self-conscious I become a bit of a shell of myself like I go into myself and I like don't feel like communicating or socializing with anyone and it's like that is not a good way to be when you're trying to start college so I was like slightly freaking out and the other thing was that it hurt so much just all the time like whenever I washed my face it was painful whenever I had a shower it was just painful even when I wasn't touching it it was just like pain like it was just my face was just in pain all the time. When I woke up, it was really painful because I had obviously been sleeping on my face and been like touching it and stuff in my sleep and it was just horrendous. And then again, I went into the back into the cycle of just like covering my face with makeup and it, I just felt like I was like regressing again. And I felt like I hadn't, you know, when, when my acne cleared up the first time, I was like, oh wait, I'm like great and confident now. And I thought that that was me changing as a person, but obviously I still, if a breakout were to happen, I still was gonna regress back into that very nervous antisocial person and I could see that happening and I, that was like worrying me because I felt like I had just improved a lot over the time and uh, I really didn't want to go back to being like that because it was like really horrible and I think people thought I was always being rude to them because I just like never looked them in the eye and I always wanted to like get out of conversations quite quickly and I just like I was like oh god I can't be like that starting this new school like that's it's gonna be terrible I'm gonna feel horrible about myself it's just gonna be so bad so I go back to America at the end of that summer preparing for school and I went to the dermatologist and I was like I don't know what's going on like I literally used to have clear skin and all of a sudden I have this all over my face and my neck and my chest and my back and it really really hurts and I don't know what to do and he started telling me about the second puberty which I was googling this morning that is not a medical term whatsoever it's very very different to puberty but it just sort of shows say similar symptoms to what someone may experience when they're going through puberty as an adolescent but it's not actually puberty at all but they call it like the second puberty like online and I guess this doctor said it's the second puberty even though it's not a medical term and I guess when I don't know if it's boys as well but I guess when when women turn like around their early 20s early to mid 20s they can experience like a rush a second rush of hormones and that causes weight changes, acne and height differences. I also grew two inches in like one summer, which was really crazy. But I was like, oh my God, like I'm two inches taller. My face is full of acne and I feel a little bit crazy, honestly. Like, I don't know if that was because of the acne or that was because I am getting like an influx of hormones. I have no idea, but I was like, this makes so much sense. So he put me on spironolactone, which I actually found out is a testosterone blocker. So I think maybe it's a buildup of testosterone in your body, I think. I don't know, because if it was any other hormone, then why would I take a testosterone blocker? But anyway, I started taking that and my skin got much better. I am someone who did not ever really want to be on any kind of medication for anything. And very, very recently before this, I had also started taking Lexapro for my anxiety. 
And so now I was like, oh, I'm adding another medication on, spironolactone. Both of these medications are like extremely strong. So I wasn't like the happiest about it. I definitely was a relief that I could take something to make me feel better. I don't know when I am able to stop taking it. I didn't have it for like a week and a half while I was traveling this summer and I got all these like tiny little pimples around my face. So I'm not sure what to do about stopping taking spironolactone, but I will say that I was always warned against taking Accutane because of the side effects of it. And the doctor said that the spironolactone was like much less harsh and severe on the body, but you kind of have to continue taking it for like a really, really long time. So yeah, I, I'm not quite sure when I'm at stop, but I will say that it helped me clear my skin so fast. And even my skin, like even parts of it that are like oily or if I have a little bit of rosacea, like that doesn't seem as extreme either. So it feels like it's like helped a lot of stuff other than just the acne, but I am a bit nervous. I would like to get off of it at some point soon because I do think they have side effects like every medication kind of does. And I feel like spironolactone is kind of one of those quite strong medications. So I am interested to see if I get puberty number three because <laughs> I've already had one and two. But I was looking through old pictures of myself and I was like thinking back on this time where I was dealing with that and it was like so crazy. And like how different of a person I was when that was happening. I think it's interesting how much we judge ourselves on things that we don't judge other people for at all. Like again, I had never really looked at someone and thought like, wow, I feel so bad for that person, Her, their skin is terrible. Like I never really ever had those thoughts ever, yet I'm so concerned about my own skin and I'm so upset when I don't feel like my skin is clear. But the whole reason I'm concerned about myself is because I think people are judging me. But if I'm not judging anyone else, why do I feel like everyone that's looking at me is judging me? Because I really don't think that they are. There's this TikTok trend, which I'm loving at the moment, which is girls are like taking videos of themselves and like <clears throat> on top of the videos, they're putting quotes like, I love Ariella so much because she has a thigh gap or I love Bethany so much because she has really clear skin or I'm really obsessed with Anna because she has a really flat stomach. And it's like, it's like no one is ever saying that about their friends. And if they are, they should pre probably like reevaluate some stuff, but it's like, never have I ever said that I was a friend of someone because of a factor of how they looked. Uh, I, it, you comment on like their personality and like things that you have in common and how kind they are and stuff. But like, I have never been like, oh, I'm so, I really love hanging out with this person because she has like really nice hair. Like maybe I think that they do, but that's definitely not a reason for me to like hang around them. So I just kind of love that trend on TikTok. I don't know what it, it's called, but it's basically like just saying like, no one's ever said, oh, I'm really happy to hang out with this person because like they have really white, perfect teeth. Like no one ever says that. No one ever does that. And that just goes to show people are not judging each other as much as we may think we are. I think we are our biggest critics in the world. And I think that everyone is much more focused on themselves than they are on other people. And I think that the people that judge other people for the way that they look are probably dealing with something within themselves again, you know? Like, I think that if you find yourself spending a lot of time talking or even thinking about how someone is looking in a negative way, like, I think that you probably are still actually just thinking about yourself, but you're sort of projecting or something. I, I don't really think that it's normal to sit and judge people. I think that if you were doing that, then there's probably something inside that probably needs to be fixed. I don't think that it's about that person. I think it's about you, probably, but yeah. Yeah, I think it's interesting how we pass judgment on ourselves so strongly. Because I literally, you know, like in the nicest way, like everyone is so selfish and like I go into that category. Like most of the time I am thinking about myself. I'm thinking about how I look, what have I achieved? Have I done my homework? Like I'm thinking about all these things and I'm like rarely thinking about anyone else. In other news, I am extremely nervous about school. I am having an actual problem with the fact that when I come home, I kind of forget school exists and then when I go to school I kind of forget home exists and it's like this annoying thing where I 
I'm at home and I feel like I don't have any work to do. And then when I get to school, I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ, like I have so much to do. Like today is Monday. I don't have any classes on Monday. And I was considering driving to school on Monday and having all this time to do all this stuff. But because I'm home, I'm like not thinking it's that serious to go drive to Santa Clarita for. So now I'm not doing it. And I definitely should have gone to school today and just like spent this day working on my stuff because I have a mid-res show in November that I'm so unprepared for. And also next week I have a crit. I don't have any work to show in said crit. So I'm currently freaking out a little bit. Uh, it all shall be well, I hope. <laughs> I'm gonna try and spend every other day this week as much as I can in the studio because things are getting a little bit hairy at the moment. Like we are getting a little bit close. I know I am a procrastinator and I tend to get things done, but at this point, like, you can only paint so fast and you need to be in sort of a creative spirit to be able to do it. So I can't really bank on the fact that I have all this time because like, I don't know if all this time is gonna be painting time. Like what if I just get in the studio and I really don't feel like doing it? Like I have to factor in those, those moments. Um, anyway, I think I should probably go because now I'm getting really stressed out again. I need to think about um, putting a schedule down. I'm really bad at putting anything in a calendar. I'm really bad at scheduling. I'm really bad at making lists of things I need to do. So I'm gonna try and do that now. Because I woke up this morning with a pit in my stomach um, thinking how, of how much I have to do. So I should probably work on that. I love you guys so much. And thank you again so much for watching. Oh, thank you again. I didn't thank you the first time, but thank you and thank you again for watching and if you haven't subscribed yet please make sure you subscribe it's super help super helpful to me and it should be super helpful to you and anyway i love you guys very much and i'll see you next time okay love you